That was pretty good. Let's put her in the bear suit. She'll be great. Some couple years go by, I don't really think much about it. The thing here is, that was Jennifer Lawrence. What I don't think enough actors understand is, we're not gatekeepers. Like, we want it to be you. You can't control uh, that you look too much like the director's ex-husband. And you can't control that I, I didn't eat lunch. Welcome everybody. This is Becoming an Actor by 1000 Failures. I'm your host, Darius Marsalin, and today I have a special guest, Corbin Brunson, casting director Corbin Brunson. He's based out here in LA, and Corbin's work has, could be seen on, on TV, in feature films, and movies. Corbin casted a few shows like The Monk, Revenge, Lucifer, Eureka, and Cloak and Dagger. Cor I met actually met Corbin through a friend of mine who's a director, and we sat down. He gave me good advice. He he really gave me a good direction on where to go in terms of looking for management. He was an easy, easy to talk to kind of guy. And when I asked Corbin to come on the show just to share his knowledge and help those out who are coming up and just dreamers, Corbin easily said yes. On this episode, Corbin spoke about just having patience and playing the long game. And for most of us, not just actors, but most of us who are dreamers, we tend to look at a short game. We tend to look left. We tend to look right. We tend to look at what people are doing on social media and not just focus on ourselves and keep focusing on the long game. Patience and discipline and consistency are the things that would get us by and make us champions towards our dreams. And in this episode, Corbin talks about the casting process. He talks about what advice he has for actors to just stay in the game and not win the audition, but win the casting director. Because in, in turn, he is the one who's putting, if you win him, you're going on his roster and he casts a bunch of stuff. So Corbin was a cool guy, easy to talk to, very non knowledgeable, very smart. And we just kind of kicked it off. So with no further wait, Corbin, ready? All right, let's do this. There's a lot of streaming networks and it's 2020 is going to be a bunch of subscriptions. Yeah. In your opinion, what do you think this industry is heading to? Yeah, well, I mean, there's more work out there than ever right now, right. which is which great for everybody. Um, you know, I feel like, you know, the however you you can get that audition, your process won't really change as an actor, right? Whether it's, it's streaming or it's network or it's a, it's a movie or whatever. Um, sure, we can talk about tone and all of these other things, but your main job as an actor is to... You know, try to do a little bit of homework and then go in prepared. There's just so many things you can't control in a day of auditioning, right? You can't control uh, that you look too much like the director's ex-husband. And you can't control that I, I didn't eat lunch. And um, But what you can control is the time you've spent with the material before you walk into my office. Correct. Completely controllable. So um, how whatever you audition, whatever service or platform it is, um, you doing that work is the first step to winning the room, building, you know, momentum in that casting office and maybe booking a job. Right. And apart from just the actor side of it, the, the whole industry, uh, do you, what type of content do you see happening in 2020, moving on to 2021? What type of content are you seeing and what's your, what's the trend and what you see? Um, sure. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, obviously, you know, the, the streaming is just going to have more content and more content, but I, I think that maybe there'll hopefully be the same progression of the independent movie. Um, I think there's some years back where maybe they, they couldn't get a lot of these mid budget independent movies made. Um, but now that they have the opportunity to sell these to streamers and not have to find a, you know, a, a theater distribution, um, maybe that will give more opportunity for, for more film to be made, which would be great. I know there's tons of television yeah. everywhere, but I feel like there's been a decline of the independent movie, uh, which is a shame. Is it is it because of 
funding head into another direction? Or what do you see? A little bit. I think it's in the past. It's just been that, you know, if you make, you know, sure, everybody can still make a, a million dollar movie and try to sell it in the conventional manners. Um, but if you're trying to make these mid range movies, these eight, 10, 12, 15 million dollar movies, um, there's more opportunity. You don't have to pre sell them foreign in order to you know, make back that money. Right. Um, there's opportunities now to go to a streamer and uh, more opportunities means that more independent movies can be made, which is great. And your job as a casting director, just for everyone listening, what is your, you wake up, you wake up in the morning, you drink your coffee, take a shower, get yeah. to work. What is your nine to five look like? Sure, man. So, um, it is a lot. So it depends on what I'm working on. So if it's the difference in, I work in television and movies and, and digital or whatever you want to call it. But if you just take television and movies, the best way to describe it to somebody is if you've ever waited tables. So uh, movies, in, in my opinion only, obviously, is like you work in a nice steakhouse and you have like four tables and like two hour turn times and television is like casting working at like a lunch place mm. where you have like seven tables and 45 minute lunch turn times and at the end of the day you may walk with the same amount of money but you work twice as hard as the second job now the good thing about television and movies is if you're working on a movie for three months at a time whatever headaches you have you're going to have those headaches for three months uh, maybe it's the script or the production people or, or something um, in television even though it's a little more fast paced right. whatever headaches you have are going to be gone eight days later that script's gone that production you know that that, that team is gone and, and you're on to the next thing which is great um, so for me uh, it, if it's a television show uh, I get in and I grab that script hopefully it's there on the day one of production and make sure I know what my team wants. We have these casting concept calls about, uh, you know, all the roles and we jump in, every casting director I know jumps in and says, okay, sure, I, I, you've explained exactly what you want from this character. We're gonna try to bring you um, everything down the middle, but we're also gonna bring you things left and right you didn't know you wanted. Mm. Um, and in these less defined characters down here, why can't this be a woman or why can't this be older or why can't this be uh, this ethnicity um, because it doesn't really say it just says this and that you know fairly nondescript so our job i feel like is to get in there and, and tinker around and with some of that stuff and we and we every opportunity we get we do they give you that power yeah i mean to at least discuss it sure yeah um at least bring it up and uh, then we you know <clears throat> get that to all the agents and managers and <clears throat> start the prep process of getting actors in the door and some days I may have morning and afternoon auditions some days I may just be on the phone with agents all day right what what is a what is a day of casting from morning to evening sure. like for you <clears throat> it's a little it can be it can be taxing sometimes but I like to pre-read more than less um, there's plenty of casting directors in this town that say Listen, you hired me for my taste. Here are the best 10 actors. Pick one. Right. Some directors like to be handled that way. I know directors that would prefer that. But a lot of people I work with want... Um, I just want to feel like I've covered as much ground as possible in the time I have. Sure, you can, you're can. you never going to see everybody. There's always going to be more people. But I'm the kind of person as a casting director that wants to make sure I've read a bunch of people I don't know. Um, that's what I feel like a big myth in casting mm. is, is I'm not going out for this casting director because they just use, you know, the same book of 50 people over and over again. And that's why I'm not going out. I, I can't imagine that's the case because, um, for example, I was one of the casting directors and did a um, hundred episodes of Monk. I went through the actors I knew in the first 20 episodes. I mean, I would never have got another 80 episodes cast if I didn't that, yeah. always get out and find new actors. And, and for most casting directors I know, that's the fun part. 
you know, um, we always want to find new fresh faces. And one of the fresh faces listening yeah. now might want to yeah. know the follow up question is where do you find fresh faces? Sure, yeah. yeah. I, I wish it could be just one thing because that would be so easy, but uh, it's everything all at once. So, you know, when I get home, I have a couple DVRs in my house. They're both smoking because they're just full. <laughs> <laughs> so I, you know, I try to get through as much of those as I can. Um, take notes on people I don't know, and uh, anytime I'm in the movies, anytime uh, you know I watch a commercial, anytime I'm, right. you know, uh, you're kind of always on in that respect. Um, and then, sure, we get out. We also maybe depends on what I'm doing. So on Monk, I, you know, you could find me a couple days a week at the end of the bar at I/O because. That's kind of the people I was casting on the show. Wow. So I was there a lot, or I was at UCB a lot. Um, but maybe I was doing a huge uh, kid search um, for the like seven year old lead in this big Chris Columbus movie. Uh, you know, then we're at like children's theaters and we're paying attention to, you know, we're right. prepping that way. So there's never just one thing we do, we do it all at once. Well, where was the last, the last unknown that you found? Where did you find that on there? Uh, oh, you can remember. So, 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 yeah, I just did something recently that uh, from the leagues. So, uh, at the end of, the, as you know, at the end of your, you know, your BFA or MFA, a lot of schools will have showcases in Los Angeles, and uh, they're usually in the spring. And so we try to go to those, and a lot of those folks are just straight out of their program, and. I try to keep all the headshots of people I think could be useful, people I really responded to. Um, and I was able just to cast two of those people recently. Nice. Yeah. Do you have a board up there or it's more digital? It's more digital, yeah. yeah. There's files you right. know, that I try to digitize and um, there's databases and things like that. Pretty wonky casting director stuff. How could, how could people in Oklahoma, Texas yeah. listening and you know, they have talent, they may be a fresh face to you. How could, what, what do you think is the best way they could reach out that's respectable? Sure. And, um, and you know, effective. Sure. I mean, uh, you start, the be- um, I forget who said it. I want to say it was Paul Rudd, maybe. But he said, bloom where you're planted. Mm-hmm. Um, which to me makes a lot of sense because I, I come from one of those towns. I come from you know Kansas City, Missouri, and a lot of funny people come from Kansas City, Missouri. And uh, <laughs> you know Paul Rudd being one of them, Jason Sudeikis, Rob Riggle, Eric Stone Street, Dave Keckner, all these people. So Kansas City, yeah, man. Uh, and most of them, uh, you know, started in their communities. You know, um, taking classes, getting involved in theater, doing improv comedy, and they didn't, they weren't the best actor in their high school and decided to move to L.A. Right. They actually decided to, well, while I'm here, let me see what I can do in my own community. Try to make a name for myself in my community. And so uh, then when you come out to L.A. or New York or wherever you go, um, you have a little bit of that momentum. I would get to know your local casting director. There's casting directors everywhere in America, um, Oklahoma or whatever states you just mentioned. Um, there's somebody there. There's somebody in Kansas City, um, and you know have those relationships. There's, you know, I in the past year um, I've done projects in uh, Vancouver, in New Orleans, in Alabama, and in Europe, and you know we. Did a lot of local actors in all those places. Right. Oh, you you cast it for projects in those places. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Do you ever have, or do you plan to have like workshops in those places, or you just don't have the time? Yeah, you? it's um, and it's not really what I do exactly, and I don't think it's what a lot of casting directors do, unfortunately. But um, I would say uh, there's, there's a bunch of different level. There's a bunch of different ways you can approach it. If you are in school, Mm -hmm. and if you're in school for acting, um, or looking at schools for acting, uh, that's a great way to go about it. Because, you know, uh, maybe your school would have a showcase out here in LA, and, you know, maybe you could find an agent and a manager that way. And um, what I I talk to a lot of kids that are coming out of school, 
And I wish that they would educate them more in the business of acting. Um, they know all this stuff about Stanislavski yeah. and all this other stuff, but they actual don't, acting but not casting. They don't audition it. Yeah, they don't know how to, you know, type a, a resume. Right. They, they don't know what a headshot should look like. They don't know that you should really spend a hundred percent of your time looking for an agent and manager right. instead of representing yourself. Correct. Uh, you're just chasing your tail representing yourself. Yeah, I think a lot of people focus, which is good. They focus 90% of their time on that learning to act and acting in a movie or acting on, on set rather than the whole process of get, get even getting on auditions because you could spend five, 10 years learning how to act, but if you never go out, I mean, I think, I think they, that is like 90, 10 for majority of people. Yeah. Yeah. Like I mean, there's totally, I mean, you have to be the, not everybody gets into acting for the same purpose, but if you're trying to, Get in, get auditions, and, and become a working actor in that way. What you have to do is be the CEO of your little small business, right. and realize that it's not ten percent of acting in the way we're talking about is it's it's not ten percent. It's probably fifty percent. Right. You know, you have to okay, as a run your run your company. Yeah. What do you like to see in actors? When when you meet an actor, what do you like to see that refreshes you and and makes your eyes open up. Definitely. Um, you know, for me, it's uh, it's, a, it's a lot of it's just tone, you know, like, uh, well, one of it's preparation and the other thing is tone and I think they probably come hand in hand. Um, I'll, maybe I'll be doing like a procedural show or something and I can tell the actors that looked at the sides, they're like, yep, cop, got it. I do cops all day. <laughs> and they come in and they do their cop. But if they would have just done a little bit of research, they would have realized that the tone of this cop show is different Correct. than Law and Order. Law and Order is not Bones, and Castle is not The Wire. And it, you know what I mean? It's right. like you have to go a little bit further. Um, and even when it comes to, like, you know, single camera comedies, you have to kind of research the writers, research, you know, go to Hulu and watch a couple. Try to copy that tone into your audition. And the people that do that always do better in the rooms, you know? And preparation's another thing. That's what I really respond to in actors. Um, only one person's gonna book it. It's, it's just as what it is. But if you come into my office and you're super prepared and you do a great job and you give a great audition and for whatever reason you're not gonna book it, I'm still gonna remember you. And I'm, exactly. I'm always going to have you back because I think that's your work ethic. I I think if I call you in again for something, you're going to prepare that scene as well as you prepared the scene you just came in for. Um, and I, I just want your listeners to know that preparation doesn't mean memorizing lines. Like I can I can memorize three pages of material. It's not hard. Um, what preparation means is that you've sat down and you've broken the scene down and thought about all these questions and come up with some answers and we can sit and have a conversation. I can say, uh, man, at the, the bottom of two, when this happens, why did you make that choice? Because a lot of people are making a different choice or, you know, at the top of three, uh, and I can just tell that we're tracking and we're having a right. conversation. Too many actors I know uh, have seen are either doing one of two things. Maybe they broke down the scene pretty well, but my office is the first time they're saying it out loud to anybody. Yeah, that's just not helpful. You gotta you gotta figure out a way to do it. Uh, rehearse, rehearse. And the other thing is that maybe they had a few other things to do. They got the you know the material at eight o'clock the night before, and they have a ten a.m. audition. Right. Um, if you don't feel like you have enough time with the material to go in and, and make a, a good showing, then you have to cancel you have to let that one go or you have to reschedule what you don't do is go don't go to the audition that's crazy because you're going to come up unprepared and i now i think that is your work ethic mm. and now i won't have you back right so if you're ever in that situation where you have other things going on that maybe just and you can't spend the time with this then you got to let it go so kind of a book in the casting director and yeah. not the job. Right, right, yeah. So I think that, um, you know, 
casting folks, you know, we may be doing, you know, more than one thing, more than one show. And right. I feel like a lot of people that maybe aren't going out as much as they want, they, they, they have the casting director seen as like the gatekeeper and all of these right. things. Like what I don't think enough actors understand is we're not gatekeepers. Like we want it to be you. Right. I, I would love it so much if it was the next actor who walked through the door. I don't even know who it's going to be, but whoever it is, I would if uh, if it, that was the person, I would love it because I don't have to cast it tomorrow. Right. And if it's them, obviously my directors and producers like them, so I'm doing my job. Um, but we can only cast what, what was what was written. Right. You know what I mean? So you're talking about how you know casting directors maybe are glad they know you because now we you know you're a three dimensional person and now we know you exist and right. so there may not be anything in this script written that I can cast you for but um, scripts that come down the line I'll be able to keep you in mind for there's so many people in my life I would love to you know help out but I can only cast what's written great right. yeah uh, what what do you think actors can do not just to be casted by you but just for themselves in their career what do you think they could add more value to promote their talents, promote their skills sure. um, in this town? We have like YouTube, we have different forms of social media. You think any of those could play a, a part in projecting their talents? Sure, sure. I don't, um, <clears throat> I don't know much about social media as far as how it pertains to booking film and television jobs. Mm. Um, sure, there's very, uh, I mean, probably plenty of cases at this point, I think that you know, maybe the, the, the mom of the Florida project, like she was an Instagram person, you know, uh, that was a great movie, Willem Dafoe, and, you know, uh, but overall, it, it's definitely, you know, it's usually not about followers and, and, and social media numbers, and I know that wasn't exactly your question, but, um, it does help, it does, <laughs> well, it does and it doesn't, I mean, yeah. I, I had, I, I learned this lesson the hard way by, um, I was casting uh, a, a movie recently and an actress left the room and I mentioned to that she just auditioned and she left the room and I mentioned to that director I said uh, by the way you know she's got you know 12 million followers oh, wow. and the director's like well great that's 12 million people that are going to watch her act, <laughs> por act poorly because she's terrible yeah. um, it, so it, it matters if the skills aren't there it doesn't really matter wow. um now, I'm sure, there are very specific things that are like, all we want is the, your eyeballs. It doesn't matter how you act. But those are just not things I cast, honestly. Yeah. Um, now, as far as content creation, sure, absolutely. I mean, I feel like that can help you in a million different ways. Uh, I, have, I know plenty of people that are out there hustling and creating content and doing everything they can to be seen. Yeah. You know. What, what do you think about actors doing monologues and posting them on YouTube? Uh, it depends. I, what I, how I find that stuff, and maybe, you know, maybe creation of content and maybe posting monologues on YouTube and maybe all this will lead you to, and there, maybe there are casting directors that work that way. I don't really, but maybe this will lead you to find better representation. Gotcha. Um, and then maybe the, that representation can then get to me, you right. know? Um, one thing I love about representation nowadays is. I'll be casting something and maybe I'll give you an appointment or maybe I won't even give you an appointment. Maybe I'll give their other client an appointment and they'll call me and they'll say, hey, I see you bringing so-and-so in. Um, I have these two new clients. They're very similar to so-and-so. Uh, you know, they don't have, they've never been in a movie and they don't really have anything, but I really believe in them and they have a couple self-tapes from other auditions that I think you might really watch. Great. Send them to me. Like, absolutely. I, right. I'll, I watch so many self-tapes that aren't my project uh and it's it's great for me because i can sit and see what's doing you know right um and what one mistake so a lot of people put their stuff on different mediums and everyone's trying to get i think a lot of people are trying to get recognition rather than to make it into like the film and tv world sure sure but for those people who are trying what mistakes could they possibly be making if you're not ready yet and you put in that out sure absolutely i think that you know uh you know plenty of people i know maybe 
go after that agent or, you know, put themselves out or maybe get with an agent and their agent isn't smart enough to tell them, listen, you let's take this next year and just focus on class mm. and, you know, and run you through some paces on some other stuff about what it's like to audition in a room and what it's like. Um, in, instead, they just send them out there. Just, you know, they think it's a numbers game. And unfortunately, what I get is people that, you know, it's, it's everybody's first audition at some point, but the people that have actually taken the time to prepare for that first opportunity um, are always going to be better. Um, a, a lot of people I know have no business being, you know, in some of those rooms. Right. Yeah. And if, if you were to say some mistakes that some actors may come in into casting offices, yeah. Apart from being prepared, mm -hmm. reading off your phone. Um, yeah, there's a few of them. You know, I, I think the biggest one, <laughs> there's a couple I can bring up. Um, remember the audition begins the minute you get out of your car. Okay. Or step off the subway or whatever you're doing. Step onto the property. Because uh, I, when, when I was doing Monk, I had a... a what office, was that cast uh, Paramount. Okay. And there's a, a coffee bean on Paramount lot. And I had about 15 minutes before my session started, so I ran over to Coffee Bean, and I'm in line in front of this person who's just berating the barista, just saying the really nasty <laughs> things. And I was like, wow, this person's having a terrible day. And 10 minutes later, that person walks into my office. Told them, though. Yeah, and I'm just like, I'm never casting you. <laughs> like, because now it's my responsibility. I, I've now sent my production team a, a, a horrible person. Right. Um, so... Remember, it starts the minute you get out of your car. Um, you get to the audition room. Listen, there's going to be people there. It's just, it's just the nature of the business. N nobody likes running behind. I can't think of any casting director who enjoys it, but it's just part of the business. Find a spot, a quiet spot, and focus. So many people get caught up in the person next to them, and all of a sudden, I'm calling out your name, and I can hear that you're in a conversation about your cats. <laughs> And now you're like, you know, you don't know where your papers are and you're like, you know, trying to, to get in the door and you come in the door and you do a terrible job. So the smart people uh, say, um, I can't, right now I, ha I have to go to the bathroom, I'm sorry. Excuse yourself out of that conversation. Go find another place to stand and focus. So you come in the office. Um, it may be just me. It may be my associate. It could be producers, directors, writers. You know, really, I guess you can ask your agent who's going to be there. But it doesn't really matter. It's not going to change what you're going to do. Uh, say hi. Maybe the director asks if you have any questions. That throws a lot of people, and there's no reason why it should. If you don't have any questions, you don't have any. Just say, nope, I'm good. Let's give this a shot. Mm -hmm. And then do your thing, you know. Uh, we'll say great. Nobody thinks anything different. Uh, the scene ends. We say, thank you very much. That was great. And leave. Forget you were ever there. What I was going to say real quick is what too many actors do, and this is something that answers your question, is, you know, they've got the audition they're so excited about. They wake up and they spend an hour getting ready and then they spend another 45 minutes drive into the audition and they get there and they wait in this waiting room for 20, 30 minutes and then they get in there and three minutes later it's done. And they finish it and I say, great, thank you very much. And they say, so that's it? I mean, we're not, uh, do you guys want to do it any other way? Do you have any notes for me? Um, and what I want to say, but I'm too nice, I want to say, no, we're not in your acting class. Mm. It's no longer what you need from me. It's actually what I need from you. And listen, maybe I'm saying thank you very much because it's now on tape. I think it's actually really good. Right. I don't want to get in there and mess with it because I'll probably screw it up. So thank you very much. Maybe I'm saying thank you very much because we are so far apart that I can't verbalize the way back to the middle. So thank you very much. Um, so don't compare how well your audition went to how many times you did it because one just has nothing to do with the other. I see people every day do it once and book the job and I see people every day do it five times and the next one is worse than the last. 
Right. And they probably leave thinking, well, that was great. Yeah. I did it five times. I'm going to book that thing. Yeah. <laughs> so, so what have you seen um, for the, those actors that come into your office and I don't know if you have some people that regularly book or yeah. some people that they walk in, you could tell when they're done and be like, all right, you booked this job. Is it a level of confidence? Is it just because it was so cl- uh, so close to what the character breakdown was? Mm-hmm. What? No, I think... I, I think that, you know, I've, I've been lucky enough to, you know, see some amazing, amazing actors in my office, and I don't think any of them leave thinking, I got that job. I mean, okay. I think they're just like, all right, that one's down. Yeah, what else do I have on my day? <laughs> you know what I mean? They're like, how do I get that next audition? Like, yeah. you know, if the, if the phone rings, the phone rings. You have to just kind of let it, it's not in your hands anymore. You, you've done what you could at that point. Yeah. And for you yourself, what's the biggest satisfaction for you in your job? Um, casting something, casting a show, and and seeing it. What's what do you? Yeah, think? I mean, it's, there's uh, casting is by far uh, or, or equally um, a very small piece of the puzzle. I mean, it's I don't want to put a percentage on it, but it's um, it's a very important percentage of the pie, right? So. Uh, after my director leaves, he has a set deck meeting and then he has to go location scout and all of those things are equally as important. Um, but what I enjoy when I sit down and I watch that movie is the, whatever percentage I had to do with that, you know, I think that's great that I was able to add or help my director's vision, uh, my production team's vision come true, um, bring them what they were looking for. Yeah. And when you see your name in credits. Yeah, it's great. (laughs) It's always fun. And for for next year, um, I know everyone has their own individualistic goals, but what's your goal and your direction for your company and your business? Yeah, it's really, you know, to keep working on things that I like to work on, that I like to watch, work with people that I like. Um, That is more fulfilling to me than casting just another 10 episodes of television. Right. Um, This is, you know, I started in 98, so it's been a minute now, and... I, Congrats. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah. And I really I really just want to work with people I like and yeah. work on projects that I, big or small, that I just am proud to be involved with. I, I, you, for sure, yeah. even if you knew it or not, you probably casted somebody and you change their lives, right? Or you call them in the office, they mm-hmm. do the job, you change their lives. Sure. Um, do you have a, a story of an actor that, that resonated with you for how you change your life? Um, let me think. Uh, I'm, I'm positive I've given, you know, uh, at this point, hundreds of actors their first job, um, which I'm, hopefully that led to a career, and, you know, that would be awesome. Um, some memorable auditions. I'm trying to think if I've had some memorable auditions. There's one good story that this actress tells on talk shows. She used to tell on talk shows. Um, when I was doing Monk, we had a, uh, uh, his assistants had a daughter and she's like 13 on the show. She was then. And we had to cast her basketball team. So we had these other 13 year old girls come in. And so now there's jobs for like four more girls, but there's also a mascot that has wearing like a bear suit right. and she has like one line. So I bring in all these 13 year old girls and. I, I match them all up, which which ones I like. We get them all cast, and there's still this one line bear suit girl, and I'm like, ah, this girl was pretty good. Let's put her in the bear suit. She'll be great. So, some a couple years go by. I don't really think much about it. The thing airs, and I keep going on. But that was Jennifer Lawrence. What? I, I didn't. I nice. didn't. I didn't think enough about her to put her actually on the basketball team with multiple lines. Let's just give her the one line. See if she can do that. This one is historic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, she was already, you know, a working actress at that point. I, she may have been a bil- bilingual at that point, but uh, I don't think I changed her life, but it's a funny story. That's a, a good story. <laughs> well, this, this, this podcast and my, the media uh, yep. platform is called 1,000 Failures, and I bet you you've seen over 1,000 auditions. Oh, sure, and, yeah. What advice would you have for... Just upcoming actors and people going after their dreams. You know, LA seems pretty and sunny, yeah. but for a lot of people inside, it's that pressure of booking that job. 
What advice would you have for that upcoming dreamer? Just that it, it's it's a, it's a long game. You can't think of this as a short game. And you got to find a way to enjoy the process. Um, that's the work. The fun part is when you book it. You know, when you book the work, that's it's probably not the work. That's probably the fun part. Um, but you have to find a way to you know, uh, look forward to going to class and look forward to sitting and prepping and look forward to, you know, all, all of these things you're doing every day. And, you know, and also don't be satisfied in some ways, you know, like I, I don't, I, I know too many, too many people in my life, actors that say, listen, I don't know. I mean, I got an agent. I don't know why my phone's not ringing. Listen, it's 10% your agent's job and 90% your job to find yourself work. Mm. Um, and those people that get out and hustle and do all these million things uh, always have a different disposition about their, their journey through Los Angeles. Um, you know, maybe it's, you, you, listen, you can't blame everything on representation, but I think being underrepresented is as useful as being non-represented. So... Listen, if it's not working, it's not working. Don't be, don't be satisfied. Like, go out and find somebody else that believes in you. And, and what I would say, my two cents about representation is, it, it's, it's a must-have. You, you can't find your way through this, this business representing yourself. You should want somebody to be your middleman, middle person. And... If you're lucky enough to get a couple meetings, right. um, remember to go with the person inside the office and not the name on the door. Because I know so many people that go with the name on the door and most of them wish they could take it back. Okay. That now they've gotten lost. Now they, you know, where that person in the office that thought about them every day and emailed them and, you know, really had their back might not have been at the their dream company they've always wanted to be at. But... That's a relationship, you know, I mean, it's, the business is about relationships. And that's the other thing I would say. It's a long game and it's also about relationships. Oh, man, I appreciate there's, that. Yeah, yeah. There's people I met in 98 that I'm still friends with now and we, you know, help each other out all the time. So don't, don't kill the baristas. Don't kill the baristas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, totally. Yeah, Corbin, appreciate all the advice and wisdom and... Yeah. Um, And we put this message out here for everyone. No, I love that you're I love that you're doing this, man. And I think uh, listen, the, the more uh, people that come out and give their two cents and casting directors, you know, uh, a lot of us love to be teachers and, and help yeah. as much as we can. And that's what I, I think that's part of the job. So cool. Thank you. All right. All right. Sweet. All right. Thank you, Corbin, for sharing your knowledge and wisdom with us. I hope your information spreads across the world and all the actors can take your advice and help their career a lot faster. And yeah, if you have a friend who's an actor, please, please, please share this podcast episode with them so that they can take that information and move forward with their careers as well. I will be launching a new series called The One on One on this podcast channel, which is basically me talking to you guys about the key essentials that I have learned as an actor here in LA for going after my dreams from patience, consistency, discipline, just every self-belief, everything that I have learned so far and all the messages and advice I have been given. I would love to have that one-on-one -on -one conversation with you guys. So look out for that right after this episode. I'll be launching the one-on-one -on -one with Darius Marcelin. This is Becoming an Actor, 1000 Failures. I'm out. Thank you for listening.